Hey everybody, good evening to you, happy Monday, it's Minister Lou, and tonight we're going to start reading out of the book of Romans. This is an epistle of Paul, if you don't know what an epistle is, it's a letter, and it's addressed to the Romans. We are on chapter 1, let's start shall we? Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, it means he descended from King David. Yeah, that's his bloodline on earth. <sighs> and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among us all nations for his name <clears throat> among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ to all that be in Rome beloved of God called to be saints grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ for I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all <clears throat> that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world for God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers making request if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end ye may be established. That is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I proposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. So he's saying, you know, I like this. He's in debt to the Greeks and other Gentiles. You know, Greeks and the barbarians. That's why wow, we were just reading about the things that happened with him with the Greeks and the things that most certainly happened when he was with the barbarians <laughs> they were very generous to him especially for the things that he did with them <clears throat> he healed so many people among the barbarians and now he's saying because of these experiences he's ready to go and preach to the Romans I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written <coughs> the just shall live by faith for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness 
and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God hath showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse because that when they knew God they glorified him not as God neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened professing themselves to be wise they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves Wow that holds true today God gave them up to uncleanness you know how many of us are unclean today how many how much uncleanness do you see in the world how much lasciviousness and people just wanting to fornicate with whoever and whatever he gave them up let the lust of their hearts take over and dishonor their own bodies I definitely dishonored my own body but I have been saved from that all because they thought they knew better and they didn't glorify God they didn't honor God then and people don't glorify and honor God now a lot of them don't believe he exists. Some people say that uh, he could do some pretty derogatory things that I've heard recently. Like, oh my goodness, I've heard some stuff. And I was like, ooh, I wouldn't have even said that. Like, goodness. <coughs> Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even the for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the man, leaving the natural use of a woman of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meat. It's calling homosexuality very vile. Vile affections. Women change the natural use into what which is against nature women with women and it also says the same thing for men <coughs> it's telling us that God doesn't favor that not at all and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient being filled with all unrighteousness fornication wickedness covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death Whew. it's saying that all these things are worthy of death it's not saying that man should put us to death it's saying it's worthy of death and that's what hell is 
Hell is a second death. You die on the earth, and if you wake up in hell, that's the second death. You were completely absent from God in a place of unimaginable torment. Like, I... I don't even want to think about that place no more, but it's good to have it on mind. Jesus preached hell a lot more than he preached heaven. Letting people know that that place is real. And how to get to the Father. What the kingdom of God's like. How to enter it. By him. Through him. No one gets to the Father without going through him. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do it. Not only to say not only are they doing the same things, but they have pleasure in it. And today you see that rampantly. People are loving doing these things. They take pride and pleasure in it. And it sucks because that's just not the way to be. We've been given how to live. By God through through man. Like, the best way I heard it explained for the Bible is, you know, I have a pen in my hand and I write something down. Who wrote it? Me or the pen? It would have been me. The pen's just a tool. For God, man was the pen. He used men to write the Bible. Nothing more than a tool to get his word out. And people don't want to follow it they don't care about the historical accuracy they don't care about the prophecies that have been fulfilled and that are being fulfilled how things are just coming true that was written so long ago we'll just ignore it it blows my mind well everybody I thank you for taking the time to come watch this video I do enjoy sharing the Word of God with you. It's what I like to do. It's good seed on the earth. That's what the Word of God is. It's good seed. I may go through all these videos, plant some good seed in your life, and come to fruition. Hmm. The kingdom of God is at hand, everyone. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is coming back. And if you're not ready to meet Jesus, it's time to get ready. It's time to repent of your sins. To turn away from the sins of this world. To deny your flesh. Turn to Him. It's time to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. As the Son of God. Who He said He is. It's time to understand and be thankful. That he took that death on the cross, paying the price of our sins. One not knowing sin. Like he knew what it was, but he didn't commit them, so he didn't know sin. He knew not one. He did none of them, but took the death and punishment like he committed every single one that every person on this earth would ever commit. And then rose from the dead three days later through the power of his father. His father rose him up from the grave, conquering sin, death, and hell. It's time to come to know how much your heavenly father truly loves you. I love you guys. And this is why I constantly share the gospel. So others may hear and be drawn to Christ, be drawn to the father. Jesus loves you. Our Heavenly Father loves you guys. Shalom.